Hi, Dr. Watson here with a review of what's new in Finale. I recently got Finale 26 and um, noticed some significant improvements, things that I like about it. And um, I would recommend if you're upgrading from any of the previous versions, uh, I think it's worth the upgrade. Uh, but especially if you're upgrading from something like, uh, I have some colleagues who are still using Finale 2011 or something like that. Uh, but even um, the prior version 25 or 2014.5, or I, th I think it's worth the upgrade. The first thing I notice about it is that um, everything looks very polished um, graphically. So it's just um, enjoyable to work with aesthetically uh, the interface. The first significant um, area of improvement that I want to talk about is called auto stacking of articulations. If you look at the score I have here on the screen, um, say in a previous version of Finale, if I would have put an accent here and then put a legato on top of it, sometimes those would collide with one another and you'd have to manually drag those articulations apart from one another. So um, being able to stack articulations on top of one another, they automatically uh, format so that they, they proportionally look uh, correct. So that's, that's the first area. Like, um, also uh, related to that is that um, slurs and articulations now play nicely together. So for instance, if I take this slur group here and I wanted to put an accent on the first uh, of the note of the slur, in the past that accent might have collided with the uh, slur marking. Or say if I want to end it with a staccato, da, da, right? Have that, that last um, note of the slur group be staccato. Now it automatically updated the, um, the slur, the slur lifted up a little bit. Um, let me just demonstrate that down here. Um, say it was maybe more of a string type of bowing thing where we'd put some, some um, staccato markings and the slur marking at the same time for, for bowing. So I think those are all noticeable improvements that uh, make it worth the upgrade. Okay, the next area that I think is, um, I've seen some noticeable improvements have to do with um, rolls and tremolos and those kind of markings and how they um, fit the stems and the, the layers that you're working in uh, correctly. So for instance here, where I have some percussion um, notation, if I wanted to put a roll on that first uh, snare drum uh, half note, the stem got a little longer. And so I didn't have to drag the, the stem longer or, um, or, or adjust where the, the tremolo, the roll marking was. Uh, let me try that over here, um, just so you can see it one more time. Right? But say you did it, um, well, I meant to do that. Say you did it on an eighth note where there's a flag there. Watch what happens to the flag when I add the roll to that. Right? The, the, the flag in the stem got longer. So um, not that I would actually put a, a roll on the end there like that, but I, I think that's a real nice improvement. Let me go into uh, layer two and do some uh, some of the same with the bass. Now watch what happens here. I'll, I'll add the roll and it went underneath it um, automatically, uh, went on the right side of it. And there's just a lot of nice things that have to do with rolls and um, their placement on the staff. So I think that's great. Um, Finale calls the fact that these articulations and rolls and everything that are they're going um, left to right at the right spot, um, horizontal centering. There, there was times where you would place a staccato mark and it would just look a little off center. Again, not sure why that um, it took until Finale 26 to, to uh, get that uh, changed, but I'm so glad it's there. All of these things are going to save a lot of time and workflow uh, for a composer. Okay, and continuing on, the next area of improvement is just that they've expanded the library of um, expressions that come with Finale. In the past, you'd get some very basic ones like Allegro, Moderato, things like that. And then if you wanted to do something more expressive or just a little less usual, uh, you would have to create it, which wasn't a big deal. Uh, but it's now nice to know that they've, they've um, you know, just thrown a whole bunch of templates, uh, things in there as defaults. So for instance here, if I want to start out um, not just simple like Allegro, but what about Larghissimo or um, Prestissimo or Listesso Tempo, the same tempo. Um, there's just more things in there at first. Again, I think there could even be more in there. Uh, why not? You know, digital memory is so cheap. Why not throw 200 of them in there as defaults? I think part of their thinking is that they want to keep it clean. And if you have to search through 200 terms, it would become cumbersome. But I, I get that. Uh, but anyway, there, there might be a, a nice uh, compromise with a few more. But, but they're, they're moving in the right direction. So I, I appreciate that. Okay. The next area that I'd like to review is um, chords. Uh, Finale um, in their releases and their um, commentary on YouTube and, and their blogs um, claims that the um, 
chords are now enhanced, that there's um, more chords in their library, and that they recognize more commonly used chord terminology, nomenclature. And while I agree with that, um, I did find that it doesn't work exactly as flawlessly or, or, or as easily as, as their YouTube video. So for instance, in their YouTube video, they show somebody putting in different versions of uh, minor, like C, C minor demonstrated or uh, indicated with C little m for minor, or C little m i n for minor, or C capital m i n for minor, or C dash for minor. And all of those just went in and were recognized automatically. What I found is that if you just set up a default document uh, with the slash notation, which is a staff, uh, a staff uh, tool, uh, staff style, but if, if you go ahead and put C M in, it actually does recognize it. But if you do C M I N, it says, hey, couldn't find it. Now this this always used to come up. Uh, you, you could add that to the library, but I thought we didn't have to add it. Um, another one, I'm going to just say no for now, another one that they claim is part of the new library would be C um, capital M I N. And again, it's not. Uh, at least it wasn't on mine. And then finally, uh, C dash, not there. So, you know, I just, I'm a long time finale user, and I know that in the past, if there was um, specialized libraries, you would go in here, you'd load the library. So I go ahead and look in um, the different uh, chord libraries, and wow, there's like a dozen or more chord libraries. So I'm not even sure which one maybe they were using on that, that video, but I'm going to just go right to um, large chord suffix. And, um, and the Arial font and see what happens there. So we'll open that library. Now I've actually added it to Finale. So it wasn't that way to begin with. And I'll do C minor. Yep, it's there. How about C M I N? Yep, that one is there with a different font. And then C capital M I N. Yep, that's there. And then C dash. Yes, that's there. So again, um, it's a little bit uh, different than what the video shows it. But um, you know, in, in working with any chords, uh, one thing that's always been nice is you could just always type C colon, colon <coughs> excuse me, C colon zero, and then you would get to go right into your um, library, and you could choose from any of the things that are already in Finale. And I do notice that there are a lot more um, chord symbols there than used to be. So um, just knowing about that little trick, C or whatever chord you're putting in, whether you know it could be G colon zero, and if I want that to be a major seven sharp five, right, I can select that. So maybe just using the colon zero will get you what you want. Let me also briefly share some of the improvements that were made just prior to Finale 26, uh, in Finale 25, and then even just, just prior to that. Uh, so for instance, if you see on the screen, I have a transposed score. Uh, flute and clarinet. Flute is, of course, in concert pitch, but clarinet is in the key of B flat, and so all of its notes have to be written a step higher than concert pitch so that they sound as concert pitch. So in the past, that created a little bit of confusion when you were typesetting some music. Um, you were looking at the music and you wanted to play the notes in uh, the way they appeared in the score, which usually is transposed. Um, let me just demonstrate that. So for instance, with this um, flute, I'm going to actually play a C um, in order to put in a C and I'm going to play a D in order to put in a D, and so on. So I'm actually playing the notes that you see on the screen, and they're sounding, you can hear the way they sound, they're actually sounding the way that we would expect them to sound. Okay, so then let me go um, to the clarinet part. Now if I would actually play what's on the um, printed music that you see down below, if I would play a D, right, it's going to sound like a, um, a step higher because I'm viewing the score in concert pitch. But if I choose to view the score the way um, the, the player would see it or, or the way to appear in a score transposed, now I'm going to play a D and it actually sounds like a C. So what's happening is it's sounding it's standing a step lower and I can put the um, I can typeset the music by just reading what's on the page but still hear it the correct way. Okay, so that may or may not be something of interest. Of course, if I wanted to see what it looked like in concert pitch, I would go back to concert pitch and see that they are actually concert pitch the same notes, but of course in the score, it's going to be transposed. It's going to be a step higher. So that's why the clarinet has two sharps. It's in the key of D. So that's something that um, I think may be of interest, especially to, uh, say, uh, band directors or arrangers who are trying to 
take music that they already have typeset and want to put it in. Some other things that are nice about recent versions of Finale is that they're forward and backward compatible. So for instance, you, you can see I'm working in Finale 26. I'm going to go ahead and save this. But let me just quit out of this and just say I'm, I'm working or collaborating with somebody who's using Finale 25. Okay, So now you can see I'm, I'm working now in Finale 25 and I can go ahead and open the duet that I was just um, demonstrating, even though it was created with Finale 2000, um, Finale 26. So the forward backward compatible is really nice um, with any program and certainly with Finale. Um, XML import works really well. Um, XML to um, Sibelius, say, for instance, if you collaborate with somebody, or um, saving um, Finale files as a smart music file, being able to export it out as a, uh, a smart music file and then open it in smart music, that's, that's wonderful too. Um, the human playback, the, uh, the new uh, sound engine, the Aria player, uh, the way that works with the uh, Garrison sounds and things like that works really well. Um, in fact, it's improved in Finale 26. Um, one thing I would say is that they claim back in Finale 25 that you could do tall time signatures easily. Like so for instance, instead of having the 5-4 appear on both of these staves, say I wanted to have a giant 5-4 appear across those staves, it still takes about 12 steps to have it happen. It's not um, as easy as um, some of the press would have made it seem. Uh, again, that's something I think could be done um, and just be a, um, an easy, um, just check a box in in Finale's uh, time signature uh, dialog box. I'm, uh, I don't know why that isn't um, just done for us, um, or at the very least, um, it should be an included um, shortcut. Um, in a plug-in, say. But anyway, um, I don't want to pick on it, but but that's one thing that, that you would have thought was a lot easier from the press um, from Finale, but but still is, is uh, tough to do. Okay, I think that summarizes the things that I um, think make Finale 26 worth um, looking at and upgrading from previous versions, and um, happy writing. Uh, talk to you next time.